And now um, we're going to move towards our penultimate uh, speaker of the afternoon, um, Dr. Fredros Okumu, Director of Science at the Ifakara Health Institute. He's going to give us a glimpse of the role of a new generation of scientists and what they're doing to deliver on the goals for 2030 with MMV. He's a mosquito biologist and a public health expert by background, and he's passionate about improving the ecosystems for young researchers in Africa and the liberation of scientific knowledge. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Um, if you know, I can't see you, so uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to request you to uh, join me once again to congratulate our young people who just left the stage. Um, uh, Thank you very much uh, on behalf of uh, everybody from my community. Um, I sometimes imagine a, a future where the young people you just saw here are actually the decision makers. I imagine a future where uh, they are sitting in the same meetings that happen in Geneva, and they are having to make a decision such as the ones that um, the mother of our brother from Ethiopia was having to make about uh, her first two kids. Uh, those decisions will be vastly different because they will be based on lived experiences uh, rather than on numbers. Uh, so once again, thank you guys very much. Uh, the future looks very much like you. Uh, how do we do that? Oh, brilliant. Thank you. So, I, I come from Ifakara Health Institute. We are in the uh, southern part. We, we began about 450 kilometers southeast, uh, south of Tanzania, uh, 450 kilometers from Dar es Salaam in the southeastern part of Tanzania. Uh, our institute is called Ifakara Health Institute, and the, the meaning, the word Ifakara actually means a place you go to die. Uh, today, we celebrate 20 years of progress. Uh, we celebrate 20 years of uh, uh, of partnerships. Uh, in those 20 years, there was also, of course, a lot of failures that uh, for some reason were not discussed today. Uh, <laughs> uh, for some reason, uh, the, the participants chose to talk only about the beautiful uh, stories. But you can be sure there were a lot of failures in those 20 years. And I think that is part of the stuff that we must celebrate today. At Ifakara Health Institute, our mission is very much to improve people's health and well-being. And this is a mission that we share uh, with many of you, I believe, and it's a mission that in the partnership that MMV has put together, that all of us uh, can be united for uh, at least once. Uh, depending on which side of the aisle you sit, you might be interested in going to zero uh, malaria for different reasons. Uh, I see several times, and I'm a vector biologist, so you know, when we talk about malaria elimination, we are talking about you know, things such as insecticide-treated bed nets and indoor residual spraying. And it always comes up in discussions when people talk about going to zero, that they're somehow more interested about the empirical zero value rather than what that zero actually means. Uh, it's very rare that people are thinking about, okay, so what's going to happen on the day we reach zero? What's going to happen next? And what is happening on our way to zero? Uh, and so for us, we start to think, well, yes, we want to go to zero. But in that process, we want to ensure as few deaths as possible. We want to ensure that on the rush to zero, that we are not skipping over uh, corpses. We are not uh, uh, you know, uh, jumping over dead bodies, essentially. And this is why it's so important that case management and the entire portfolio that MMV and partners are building uh, uh, is really, really crucial. Uh, so let's, let's keep that going. Um, you know, in, uh, in 1990s, I was still a young boy, um, and um, uh, I had my own dreams. Um, I, I can't tell exactly whether I already decided at that time that I wanted to be a scientist. Um, it's unfortunate, uh, maybe not unfortunate, I don't know, but several times we have been referred to as the dark continent. 
Uh, I have seen some very powerful news uh, magazines refer to Africa as a basket case. Um, in, in recent times, I've even heard some people call some countries in Africa shitholes. Uh, I am not very um, sure about why they say that. I know this is not true. But I also remember uh, from reading that uh, as was believed in 1940s, that all men are created equal with certain rights and dreams. And um, we've had these dreams even when we were young. We always thought that we could be doctors, we could be scientists, we could go to the moon, uh, we could build a car, uh, we could make our families dependent, uh, indep independent and so on. And these dreams remain alive. So for us, when in early 2000s, uh, at Ifakara Health Institute, we began to work with uh, MMV and partners, um, and Novartis uh, in particular, um, there was at this time, you know, a very limited portfolio. Uh, Professor Kelly was saying earlier that only about 2% of clinical trials are happening in Africa today. Uh, unfortunately, that is true. Um, but what, he also, what we, we also saw was that, of course, you can have medication that is programmed, that is planned for adults or Caucasians, if you like. Uh, but if you were a child at this time, you really had nothing. So I remember many, many times uh, when we, I mean, many of us had several episodes of malaria uh, in a year. And many times we remember my, my mother, for example, she had to break these little tablets into pieces and uh, they would give me half of this and later give me another half. Uh, and at that time you don't understand why they do this. It's only later that you realize that this is really a case of parents uh, trying to innovate to save their kids. This is really a, a parents in a situation where there are no formulations for kids. Uh, they have to, you know, if you have a, a capsules with, little, with powder in, they would open this and take a little bit and put in a spoon. Uh, at that time, the people who had access to medication were seeking profits. They didn't really care about uh, uh, the people who were suffering. With the coming of MMV, uh, you start to see that you have a new set of thinking. Uh, MMV starts to think about people rather than profits. Uh, you start to see here uh, that behind those numbers there is indeed real cases. So at Ifakara, when we began to work with, uh, with, with the, the partners about you know, uh, formulations for children, it was really an exciting moment. And today, uh, when I was being told that we already have nearly 400 million medications, uh, treatments of, of the uh, child formulations in 50 countries, about you know, 850 lives saved, this is really big value. And uh, most of my young colleagues here do not realize just how much value there is in the little things that they think they are doing. Uh, sometimes they think, well, I'm just trying to test this little thing. But in the big picture of it, this is going to create such a big value uh, 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 that is far beyond just your own being. So once again, congratulations on that. Beyond that, something else has been happening, of course, it is uh, true that if you look only at published information, uh, that the quantity of that information coming out of Africa was very little. It was like, you know, maybe 1% or so, if you consider only published, published knowledge. At Ifakara Health Institute, we understand, yes, that we are in the knowledge industry, but our mission is really to improve people's health and well-being. And so right in the middle there, we have to get a mechanism to transfer that. So yes, there has been some effort in improving, you know, the, the, the increasing the the amount of information coming out of Africa, so a lot of research is happening there. In the malaria community, this has moved much faster, which is quite an incredible um, uh, outcome, you see. Uh, today, about 20, 25% of all the publications on malaria are actually coming from, uh, um, uh, from Africa. So this is uh, quite a good thing, and we believe that we can ride on this wave uh, to get more people trained, to get more people working on this problem, and maybe get better, and hopefully get better solutions going forward. Now, of course, um, sometimes when you have good uh, products, like good medications, we've seen this happen in the years when we had DDT, for example, uh, uh, that people start to forget and they start to think that these commodities are adequate. Now, you've got to be careful. I mean, one of the, the disadvantages of having a very powerful commodity is that you forget that there are other components to the health system, that you need food soldiers, for example. 
And so there is a sense in which a, a practical malariologist, uh, either those working on parastology or entomology or you know, in the health systems, just kind of disappeared with the growth of the commodities, with the improvement in, in new types of medicines or vector control products. We have to ensure, however, that we take some time to think about how do we create sustainability, how do we create resilience so that even after we have removed these cases from our communities that we can stay, we can sustain that growth. And this requires that we focus a lot more on training young people. Uh, that there's not only the nine colleagues of mine who are here, but there is there's thousands of them in these countries. And I think this is something that we can already do. Uh, and and I, you know, in the next phase of MMV, this is something that you know, would be really, really beautiful if 20 years down the line we come here and uh, you know, half of this room is really people from endemic countries or maybe even more than half. So we have seen that this is very, very possible. It's amazing to me always in Ifakara when you see these young people approach malaria research in a very different way. Uh, I was telling uh, Melissa today that, uh, um, uh, you know, when I was studying statistics in the past, we used to approach it as a math problem and it was always very difficult. In our lab today, our young people, they approach statistics as a video game and they enjoy it and they like to write code and, and you know, they, they, they want to do AI and all that. And but we can ride on this wave and really support the guys going forward. Now, as academics, it often happens that we start to isolate ourselves from communities. We start to say, you know, we are, you know, academics, yeah. Um, I have a PhD, why should I go to the field and, and all that? Now, we've got to think about how do you create sustainable solutions? How do you address the right, the, how do you uh, uh, ask the right questions? How do you create the right solutions? And this will mean that in our desire and in our uh, in process of developing new capacity that we are staying as much as possible linked to the communities. That we're providing the necessary mentorship but in the community context and that we are understanding that this is going to take a very, very long time. It's not just capacity building in the terms of, you know, like you train six people, seven people. It's an entire career that we have to, uh, to build uh, going forward. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to uh, once again congratulate uh, MMV and my, and my colleagues who have been here and thank everybody once again on behalf of my colleagues back home. We know that you share in this mission. We know that many of you probably have not experienced the same cases as we have, but you are with us in this fight and we Thank you very much for that. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for the day. So thanks uh, very much, Fedros, and also for that, um, again, sort of reality check, I think. You know, there's a, sometimes there can be a tendency to over-focus on the positives and the achievements and the, the great vision, but I think we do have to be realistic and we do have to learn from the failures and the huge challenges ahead, which is so fundamental, I think, in actually also driving many more people to, to focus on these issues. So we've heard some great um, interventions and ideas and approaches and energy across the course of today and some of the significant work of MMV as well as its partners in uh, delivering as much as they have over the past 20 years. I'm certainly not going to torture you with any sort of song, <laughs> happy birthday or otherwise. Um, but I do think it's been, it's been great to hear in both, not in terms simply of um, drugs, but also a wider toolbox of interventions. Increasingly, of course, talk about data and AI, though I think we also have to be a little skeptical of the overpromise of data, big data and AI as well as the new faddish approach. Very important, but still very much untested. And I think as we heard from some of the younger researchers as well, the kind of the implementation science, the human issue is still so fundamental um, because, you know, one thing that's always interested and in, intrigued me about malaria is compared to some of the other big infectious diseases in particular, we have so much already, the drugs, the diagnostics, the prevention tactics, the cures, and yet there is still this incredibly sobering figure of almost half a million people dying each year. So there's so much more to do. And that seems to suggest a need not only to continue the momentum and tap the energy that we've heard today, but also think about new approaches and systems and architectures, if you like, and how malaria needs to be tied into the social and the human as well as the, the scientific worlds of research and action, and to think about the wider agenda about um, 
universal health coverage, for example, and integration into that wider network of support so everybody, wherever they are in the world, can get the benefit of treatment for malaria if it's necessary, or indeed alternative diseases where, through a good diagnostic, for example, it turns out that malaria is not the underlying cause of the symptoms we're observing. Um, and as George said earlier, it's true that no doubt there will be many more flat tires on that last and very long mile towards delivery, but one certainly to keep focused on.